Hi, I'm Matt, and today I'm going to teach you about Magic the Gathering. What is Magic, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you did ask. Magic is a collecting card game invented in 1993 by Richard Garfield. It's a game where you and your opponents will present a deck of 60 cards. You choose the cards from a selection of hundreds and thousands of cards. So the deck you present is literally something that you've constructed and built yourself with your heart and your passion. Now, just like in any game, such as chess or poker, you need pieces to play it. These pieces are represented by cards like this. And each card is different, and certain cards are more powerful than others. So how do you actually play the game? Well, there's a few things you need to learn first. For example, you are a planeswalker, kind of like a mighty wizard. In the world of magic, you need to use mana, or a term of energy, to play your cards. Mana is represented in five different colors. We have white, blue, black, red, and last but not least, green. So how do you actually play your cards? Well, I have an example right here. This is Catacomb Slug. It is a creature, as you can see right here, and you can see the name up here called Catacomb Slug. Up in the top left of the card, you'll see its mana cost. That's how much mana is needed to play the creature. You can see a black swamp symbol and the number four in a gray circle. The black means you need one black mana to summon this creature. And the gray four means you need four of any other mana to summon this creature. So for example, if I was playing a black and red deck, I can use two black mana and then three red mana to summon this creature. So now I'm going to explain the different card types used in Magic the Gathering. This top row of four cards are, are permanent. Permanents will come into play and stay in play until something removes them from the game. These bottom two are non-permanents. Non-permanents will do their job or task and then are immediately removed from the game afterwards. So let's go through each type. This one is a land. You can see it's a land because it says land here. This one is specifically called plains. They, this also falls into the category of the other lands we spoke about earlier, which are mountain, island, swamp, and forest. Lands come into play and they produce mana for you to cast your spells. The next type is an artifact. You can see it's an artifact because it says it right here, artifact, and it's called Relic of Progenitus. Now, unlike the other cards we see here, this one is gray. It's not a new mana cost or anything, it just means it's colorless. By it being colorless, you can use any color of mana to cast it. For example, I can use a red or a black source to play this card. The next card is an enchantment. Enchantments are used in a variety of different ways. For example, they can make your creature bigger, they can stop other creatures from attacking, or have a permanent effect on the battlefield, such as making certain types of creatures bigger on your side and making your opponent's creatures smaller. Enchantments are used quite often in Magic the Gathering. Last but not least, we have creatures. Creatures are the bread and butter of Magic the Gathering, the, the primary way of defeating your opponent and making their life total reach zero. You know this is a creature because it says creature, and then word after it is slug, so this is a slug creature. Up here you can see the converted mana cost as we spoke before, and at the bottom you can see its power and toughness. This is where creatures differ from other types of permanents. Creatures, since they have to deal damage to your opponent, uh, have to deal the damage equal to their power cost. So the power here is 2, so that means our friend Catacombs Love can deal 2 points of damage to your opponent or to your opponent's creature. The 6 represents how much health or toughness the creature has. That's how much damage the creature can take before it inevitably dies. Now up to the non-permanents. Here we have an instant. An instant can be played at any point in the game, provided that you have the mana to play it. It can be played on your opponent's turn, it can be played on your turn, it can be played in response to other things happening. It can be played in the middle of combat even. An instant will be played, it will do its job, and then it will, is removed from the game straight afterwards. Finally, we have a sorcery. A sorcery is just like an instant, except it can only be played on your turn. The sorcery will do its job, and then it's removed from the game. So here, I just explained the six primary types of Magic the Gathering cards. So, the best way to actually learn is to watch them play a game. So why don't we go play a game? Whoop. So, when you need to play a game of magic, you need an opponent. Let's get ourselves an opponent. <sighs> Perfect! You'll do just nicely. Now, first thing, first thing you need to do in magic is find out who's going first. Now that I'm the better looking, obviously I'm going to go first. You both start with 20 life. And you also both start with seven cards. So now we're both going to draw seven cards from our decks. Seven. And once we're both 
happy with her opening seven cards. We may begin the game. Are you happy? Yes. Perfect! As I said earlier, you need lands to play your spells. So, once per turn, you can play one land card from your hand. During a game of magic, you're allowed to draw a card at the start of your turn. But since I'm going first, I do not get the draw. So, for my turn, I am going to play one land card. Like so. And I'm going to pass the turn to my opponent because I do not have any other cards. So it's my turn. So I draw a card, right? So draw a card. And now I can play one land, right? Because I haven't played land yet. You're correct. Like this. Oh, okay, cool. Your turn now. Now it's my turn. I will start my turn by drawing a card. Now I can play another land because I have yet to play a land for this turn. I will now play an island. I would like to cast a spell, so I'm going to cast this spell, Just Guy Sage. It is a creature for one blue and one colorless. That means I'm going to tap this item for blue and this red for the colorless. I now have one creature. The creature cannot attack yet because it has summoning sickness and has to wait one turn before it can attack. So I'll pass the turn to my opponent. So I draw a card right at the start of my turn, like this. And now I can play a land, right? Because I have played land just, so I can play this uh, swamp. And uh, now I'm going to play uh, this creature called Highland Game. So for one green and one other mana, so like this. And now I'm going to uh, attack. Oh, remember, creatures can't attack the turn that they came in. They have to wait at least one turn before they can attack. So all, the only thing left for you to do is to pass the turn. Oh, I won't attack. Um, pass turn. Now, I have tapped cards. How do they become untapped? That's very simple. At the start of your turn, before you draw a card, you can untap any tapped cards, and that is represented by turning them 90 degrees the other way, like so. Now that I've untapped all my cards, I can now draw a card. Now that's my turn again, I'm allowed to play more spells and summon more creatures. First off though, I am going to play this other island, so now I have a total of three lands in play, one red and two blue. Before I attack, I'm going to play this card, this instant called Lightning Strike, by tapping one red and one blue card. This lightning strike is an instant, and I'm going to target my opponent's Highlander gain. Lightning strike does 3 damage to a creature. Now since Highlander gain has 1 health, that means that this lightning strike has more than enough damage to kill it. So therefore, lightning strike will go to the grave, and so will Highlander gain. I really like Highlander gain. Now that the board is clear, I'm going to attack my opponent with my Jeskai Sage. BAM! Take one, fine. Now my opponent will lose one life, therefore going from 20 to 19. I have no more cards to play, so therefore I'll pass the turn on to my opponent. Oh, it's my turn now, so I untap the cards, right? So I'm gonna tap my two lines like this, right? That's good, right? And I'm gonna draw a card for my turn. Okay, so I'm, I haven't played a land yet this turn either, so I'm gonna play another forest. And then I'm gonna tap my forest and my swamp and my other forest. I'm gonna play Abzan Battle Beastmaster. Abzan Beastmaster, beg your pardon. He's two and one green. So I go to the green, there's the two. And he's a creature for two now. And I won't attack this turn because he's summoning sick. So I'll pass the turn to you. This is a basic turn order in Match of the Gallic. This process repeats several times, either until you or your opponent's life total reaches zero. Once someone's life total reaches zero, they have lost the game, and you are victorious. Let's flash forward a little bit and see how this game turns out. Okay, so now I'm going to attack with all of my creatures. I'm going to attack you for uh, 37. Good job. Uh, rematch? Right, so let's quickly recap on how we to play a game on Magic the Gathering. First off, you and your opponent will present a deck of 60 cards, like we did earlier, and each of you start off with 20 life points. You both draw 7 cards, and that's when the game starts. There are permanents in the game, for example, land, creature, artifact, and enchantment, and there are non-permanents, such as sorcery and instant. Non-permanents will come into play, do their job, and then go to the graveyard. Permanents will stay in play until something removes them from the game. Remember, you can play one land per turn, and you need to tap a land to produce mana to play your spells. Creatures, for example, Highland Game have mana cost, just like every other spell, but also have a power of toughness. In this case, two and one. Two attack and one toughness. The two represents how much attack or damage you can deal, and the one represents how much 
much damage it can take before it dies and goes to the graveyard. Now, you may play one land in either of your main bases. You can play a land once per turn. You can summon a creature or play a sorcery card in either of your main bases. During the attack step, you attack with as many creatures as you like, and your opponent is given the option to block if they wish. You resolve damage, creatures may die here, and you deal damage to your opponent. Once that happens, you take your second main phase, and then you can play more creatures, play more sorceries, and things like that. And then you end your turn and pass it back to your opponent. Don't forget, you can play an instant at any point in the game, that includes on your opponent's turn, in the middle of combat, or even in your main phase if you choose so. So now that you know all this, you can easily hop into a game of magic with your friends. All you need is a deck, so be sure to hit up your local game.